I thank the organizing committee for the honor of this invitation. These are my disclosures. Um, today, I will describe the multi-level etiologic framework of healthcare disparities, emphasize the need for a comprehensive approach to uh, developing corrective interventions, uh, give examples of solutions to the problem of inequitable lung cancer care delivery, and highlight the fact that social policy interventions are our greatest endeavors. So this is the U.S. Uh, lung cancer mortality map. The red states uh, have the highest per capita burden, and that leaderboard is Mississippi, is Kentucky number one, Mississippi number two, Arkansas number three, Tennessee number four, West Virginia number five, Alabama number six. This is the county level. And those states in pink, th those counties in pink, red, and purple uh, continue to see a rising incidence and mortality of lung cancer in the United States. And this just shows that my healthcare system is right in the middle of that area. So if my healthcare system, Baptist, uh, was a state, with 12 to 1300 annual lung cancer cases. We actually would have more than more lung cancer cases every year than 12 of the 50 United States. Um, disparities are defined in many different ways. Um, my favorite definition is simple, avoidable or preventable difference. Uh, the patterns are predictable and similar. They emerge or worsen with discovery and innovation and have this multi-level etiology, patient, provider, organizational, and social policy etiologies, which cluster together, leading you to geographic disparities. Understanding this is a key to figuring out corrective interventions. One of the key points to understand is that the more um, targets there are for intervention, the less effective uh, the, the interventions will be. So we know there are way more patients than their providers, way more providers than institutions, and way more institutions than our po social policies that guide healthcare. Well, in terms of intervention, social policy interventions are much more effective than at the other end of the spectrum, patient level interventions. So, Care disparities run the full gamut uh, of the population impact pyramid from preventive care all the way to palliative care for advanced uh, disease across all of thoracic oncology. So for example, we know that uh, low dose screening CT of high risk um, in individuals saves lives. This is that lung cancer mortality map of America. I showed you this time colored black. And, and this is the map of the deployment of low-dose screening CT infrastructure in the United States. You can see very clearly that there's a mismatch between the places where lung cancer kills and the places where um, we have invested in low-dose screening CT scan facilities in the United States. Um, here is another example um, where when you look at the uh, current criteria for eligibility for uh, CT screening uh, by race and uh, sex, and then you match that up with the incidence of uh, lung cancer in those uh, demographic populations, you find that there is a striking disparity for both men and for women by race and sex in the rates of eligibility for CT screening with white men uh, in, in red the red bar being most readily um, um, uh, accessible to screening, whereas black men and other races are significantly uh, less likely to be eligible for screening. Here's an example of how our screening criteria actually drive racial disparities in access to screening. Now, how does one go about uh, tackling this problem? One approach is not only to screen eligible patients, but also to take the scans that are done that show abnormalities um, in other people who have x-rays, uh, abnormalities that could be lung cancer, and actually manage them uh, uh, proactively in these so-called incidental lung nodule uh, programs. Um, you see what you, you can get. In our healthcare system, for every one lung cancer patient diagnosed through the low-dose screening CT program, we have actually found five lung cancer patients through the incidental lung nodule program. And the interesting thing is suddenly we find that the racial disparity can be really narrowed by this means. 
Now, the goal of early detection, of course, is to be able to take people to curative intent treatment, such as surgery. Here is the surgical access disparity map of America, ranging from 50% of stage one and two lung cancer patients getting surgery in Wyoming to as high as almost 80% in Utah. The county level disparity is even worse, from 13% to 92%. What's the solution to this? Well, multidisciplinary decision making. Getting the right patient to the right treatment uh, is easier within a multidisciplinary forum than outside of it. And not surprisingly, that leads to improved survival. Uh, multidisciplinary care, the green plot, compared to non-multidisciplinary care in blue and red. So um, we also know that even getting patients to surgery, disparities happen even after access to surgery. And this map just shows you how the evolution of uh, surgical resection that met NCCN guidelines criteria went from as low as 4% in a large healthcare system to subsequently with sequential interventions to 70, 80%. Now, finally, we know that in, a, in an age of rapid discovery, the best treatment is a clinical trial. We also have heard that black people are less likely to participate in clinical trials and other races. This shows you that the problem is particularly bad with pharmaceutical industry trials, much, much, much less severe in NCN, um, NCI sponsored clinical trials, but even those lag behind the prevalence of disease in populations. And this is irrespective of cancer, including cancers that are even more prevalent in black people. So what is the cause of this problem? It turns out the biggest problem is the places where people go to seek care have no clinical research infrastructure and therefore those patients have no access. Now, if you look at the orange segment, which is from the point at which there is a clinical trial available that patients are eligible for, suddenly you find that there is no race-based disparity in access to clinical trials. So the take-home message is that healthcare, justice, and other disparities are a reversible sociopolitical construct. And in order to overcome them, we have to focus on the areas where we're most likely to be sustainably successful, which is at the social policy level, next at the organizational and then provider levels, least effective at the individual level. Healthcare disparities, like other disparities, are a major social political problem.